it later. So if things are getting really bad, please let me know and I'll stop the YouTube stream, okay? Free things are great. All right, guys. So we need to get going because last time I kind of did a hurried uh, lesson into Law of Signs. So really quickly, I want to start with what is Law of Signs? So if I took a look at a triangle and the reason why we use um <clears throat> the reason why we want to use yeah I, I hate the internet being slow thing um the reason why we want to do law of sines and law of cosines what we're going to do next class is because it um it enables us to do uh oh shoot i should make sure that i'm using the same notation as the book it enables to solve triangles that aren't right triangles. And so you guys did right triangles in geometry, but we want to be able to do triangles that um, are not right triangles. Uh, we want to be able to do any triangle. So I'm just making sure that I'm doing, uh, yes, this the right way. Okay, so the reason why we do this is that we have a height here. So this would be side B, this would be side A and side C. So where law of cosine, uh oh, is it is this really bad? I'll I'll end my YouTube stream. Okay, so I'll just have to upload this later, guys. I'm really sorry about that. I just don't have the bandwidth to do this. Um oh, of course now it's like, oh my gosh. Okay, it should get better in here in just a second. So basically what we're looking at, if you were to take a look at angle A, sine of angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be H over B, okay? And then we can do the exact same thing here uh, with um, C, So um, or let's do B. So I can also say sine of angle B, so here's angle B, would be opposite over the hypotenuse. So that would be opposite over hypotenuse okay so and what we're going to find out today in law of sines is actually all about the height of the triangle so and and that's really key what the key takeaway from this today is that the height of the triangle is what's most important so i'm going to solve both of these for h so if i solve both of these for h i get b sine of a equals h and i get a sine of uh, B equals H. Well, they both equal each other. Do you guys see how they both equal each other? So that means B sine of A equals A sine of B. So then I divide by A and I divide by B. So I get sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. So again, the reason why it's called law of sines is you're basically saying if you use laws, if you use sine of two angles in one triangle, they have the same height. So then that's where you get law of sines. Now this has just sine of A over A and sine of B over B. We could redraw the height to get C in there. And I didn't get to do this last time and I'm really sorry, but uh, I just really wanted to derive law of science. This isn't something that some white guy was just like, law of science, and now you know. No, this is like everyone can derive the law of science, and that's how you do it. It's literally just um, using the height to make a right triangle, and then doing law, then just doing sine, right triangle trig, and then doing some algebra. So hopefully that's cool. Hopefully that, um, that inspires you and just like, whoa, math is pretty cool. I want to do proofs again. <laughs> um, because you get some really cool stuff, okay? So again, the law of sines, uh, right, is sine of angle A over side A uh, equals sine of angle B over side B and sine of angle C over side C. And again, you can flip this, right? So uh, it doesn't matter if the side is on top or if the angle is on top. All that matters is that you're consistent, right? So we call this the law of sines. Okay. And I apologize last time. I made a mistake. We spent all that time reviewing, but it ended up being a good thing anyways. So just to re, uh, just want to make sure, does anybody have questions about this? Does this make sense? Does anybody uh, want to ask anything or clarifying questions? This is where you get a lot of signs, right? So we did one, step one, step two, step three, step
step four. Okay. So anybody have questions about this? Are you guys okay? I, I stopped streaming, so hopefully I'm not uh, Mr. Roboto anymore. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Domo. Domo. Domo means thank you, I think, in Japanese. I'm not sure. I think I'm pretty sure on that. Domo arigato. All right, good, good, good. All right, cool. So hopefully this makes sense, guys. Uh, this is the derivation of law of sines. Now, obviously, I just did sine and b, but again, with, with equals, right, you would only choose two of these at a time. Okay? Okay. So what we're going to talk about today is the ambiguous case of AAS. So the ambiguous. All right, I'm looking up how to spell ambiguous because it's not a word I use a lot. The ambiguous case of ASS. So I don't know if you guys remember back to geometry, but in geometry, you did congruent triangles. And you were like, how can we prove triangles congruent? SSS, SAS, ASA. But then your teacher probably said, but you don't do ass because ass is a bad word. Well, here we are. We're more mature. And guess what we're going to say a lot? Ass. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and type it in chat. Say it out loud. If your parents are home and you're doing this, your parents would probably be like, hey, stop saying bad words. Right? But no, I give you permission. We're pre-calc students. We're in high school, we can say ass, right? Because we're going to learn about the ambiguous case of ass, okay? And that is when I say ass, when I say donkey, what I'm saying is angle, side, side. So again, remember, I'm given, so what we're talking about is the ambiguous case of ASS, angle, side, side. Um, or you can think of it as sa, right? That's just ass backwards. So. Don't be ass backwards, I'd say, you might as well just say ass, okay? Ambiguous means what's going on. So this is gonna be really difficult to understand. So I'm going to set this up in stages and try to break it down to you that it makes sense. Now, just a pro tip, if at any point today you get lost or disconnected, everything, is su everything that I'm gonna talk about is summarized on page 402 of your book. Not 420, don't be dyslexic on me, 402, okay? So if you want more ass, go to page 402. God, that sounds weird saying. I really hope you don't have people listening to this conversation in another room and they're like, what are you learning? Okay, so there's gonna be, this is summarized on page 402, but I'm gonna do everything I can to break it down because ultimately uh, in the real world, you would memorize this and it's really easy. And I'm just gonna say this, I'm gonna say this over and over again. What matters is the height. The height is what matters. And now if you're self-conscious about your height, don't be. Your height is a beautiful thing, okay? <laughs> you should put that in the yearbook. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for what I say. All right, so again, it's all about the height. So remember, it's angle, side, side. Now. I, again, you might be like, well, why don't we just call it SSA? Like Tom, Mr. Race does that. Well, cool. I do this for a purpose because we want to start with the angle. So just really quickly, I'm going to draw the three parts. So I have an angle. Notice how I have an angle. That's it. Do you guys see how I have an angle? I have a side. And then this is where things get really important. I'm going to have a pivot point. Now, a pivot point is like hinges on a door. A hinge can be like a pivot. It's going to rotate. So this is the point where rotation happens. And then I have another side. So I have a side, I have a side, and I have an angle. This is ASS. Now, in dot, the dot doesn't exist. Are you guys seeing the dot doesn't exist? Okay. So... What's really important here, do you see this side right here? It's on a pivot. That's because we don't know this angle right here. I wanna say this again. We do not know this angle right here. All we have is ASS. That means we know one angle. Remember, and if you guys remember from geometry, order matters, right? So it has to go angle, side, side. The angle is not in between the sides. It's, it's by itself. So angle, side, side. 
So there's a pivot. These two sides are connected, but we don't know the angle. So what can happen is, is that this, if my pen was this side, is it can rotate like this, okay? Now, that's gonna give us a lot of problems, okay? And so this is why you didn't do ASS problems in geometry, is because it's complicated, okay? And in ASS triangles, you're gonna have three different possibilities, but it's gonna be three different possibilities. Um, I think it's six different ways. So you're gonna have three different possibilities, six different ways. Your possibilities are no solution, one solution, two solutions, okay? So you're gonna have, so you will have one solution, two solutions, or no solution. Now, I can tell you, I know which one's gonna be your favorite, and that's the no solution, because as soon as you figure out there's no solution, you're done with the problem, okay? Two solutions, kind of a pain, because you have the most to do, but it's just sign, it's really easy to do, okay? So, now, this is the tools that we have. So, we're gonna have one, two, or no solutions, and there's six scenarios that can happen, okay? You do not need to memorize the six scenarios. They are logical, I'm going to teach you the logic, you do not have to memorize them. Now, until you understand the logic, it's good to look at page 402 to help, re like, hey, is my logic working, does this make sense, okay? Not something you should memorize, okay? So the idea here is that this side should pivot, and from the pivot point, we have the height. The height is the most important part, okay? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just drawing stars. Okay, the height is the most important part. Okay, so you have an angle. You have two sides. The two sides are connected by a pivot, which means this side can rotate, and the height is the most important part. Okay, so again, you're like, Kreft, where are you going with this? I just really want to make sure you have those things uh, set. Okay, because now we're going to go over... Uh, we're going to go over... Um, Three, we're gonna go over six different things that can happen, okay? So, first we're gonna look at four. And so the first, so we're gonna group these. So the first one is, if angle A is acute. Now, you don't have to, rem to memorize these as acute, and I'll show you why. Okay, so if A, angle A is acute. So you guys ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a bunch of these. You stop me at any point when you're like, I can only handle so much ass. Okay, like stop craft. Okay, so let me know. And yes, I I I wait for that joke every year. Okay, here we go. Here's angle A. Here is side B. And here is side A. And then here is height H. Now, in this case, side A is less than the height. Now, so remember, and maybe I should write this up here, always find H first. That's how you solve these problems. Always find the height, okay? Because this side length is gonna be given to you, okay? This side length will be given to you. So all you have to do is find H. Now, um, um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's just sine, right? So because the height is here, so sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So do you guys see that, how it's sine? Hence, this is law of sines. So you use sine to find the height. Anyways, so what I mean by this, and I'm gonna, can you imagine, so remember here, up at the top here, that's my pivot, right? So I'm gonna put a little strobe light. Are you guys ready with me? You're gonna use your imagination. I'm gonna put a strobe light on the end of A. 
So this is gonna swing. And as it swings, you're gonna see the strobe light and the strobe light's gonna look like this. So my question for you, if A is shorter than H, would I ever get a triangle? Like if I swing this, will it ever, will I ever get a triangle? Type it in chat, turn on your mic, what do you got? Yeah, you're not gonna get, so there's no solution. And when I say no solution, what am I meaning? When I say no solution, it means no triangles. Okay, so as soon as you find that A is less than H, no solution, you're done with the problem. There's no triangle here. Boom, done. You're like, put that on my homework. I did. Okay, all right. So there's scenario one. <clears throat> scenario two. I have angle A, I have side B, I have, now just a second, I have to remember I'm using the power of, of guessing here. So I have my pivot point here and I have my height here. Okay, so now my question is what happens when A equals H? So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna work backwards. See how I did that? So if A comes down here, so I can go like that. So you can, so it's gonna like make a, a pendulum, right? Like this would swing to make a pendulum. So if this comes down and it's the exact same height, how many triangles would I make? So if A comes down and swings and it sits perfectly right there, same height, same length as the height, what do we get? How many triangles? Yeah, and Constantine, sorry, I, I said I wouldn't say names. Um, I just got really excited because you're here and you're participating. I'm just like cloud nine. Uh, what kind of triangle would it be? Is it a special type of triangle? If A was the same height, it's a right triangle, right? So there would be one solution and it would be a right triangle. Okay, so again, when we're gonna be solving these, these triangles, again, we're going to be finding the height and comparing it to the side opposite of the angle. Do you guys see that? So this is the side opposite of the angle given. We're gonna be comparing it. So if it's less than H, and again, do you see how you don't have to memorize this? If you just draw a sketch and you say, okay, it's less than, it's never gonna hit, right? And if it's equals, okay, then it's gonna hit exactly once. So again, you don't have to memorize this. A quick sketch or a visual in your head can confirm how many answers you have, okay? Uh, okay, the next one. Angle A, side B, um, side A, and my height. Sorry, I tried to make it a dashed line so that you know it's not it's not real. What happens if A is greater than, I hate how they say equal. We just did equal. Oh, uh, greater than or equal to, that's what they're doing. Greater than or equal to B. Okay, so here, I'm gonna do a little a bit of shenanigans here just a second. So I made my A a little bit longer than B. So if A is greater than or longer than B, if we take a look at this, how many possible triangles are we gonna have? Do you guys see this? So if A is longer than B, do you guys see how we're just gonna have one triangle, right, where, where it touches down right here. So it's just gonna be one solution. Okay. 
Are we having fun yet? I'm having fun. Okay, and then the last one for acute. Uh, what's this last one going to be? So I'm going to have to do like this, like this. Of course, I drew my intersection right here. Okay. A, and then this is height. The last one is if. Lost my pen. Okay, this last one is if A is greater than H but less than B. And what happens here is if I swing this, it's going to hit, and I'm just kind of, it's going to hit twice. And this is the one you guys are going to hate. See how it hits twice? So I could have a triangle here, or I can have a triangle here. Right? In this case, the height is inside the triangle. In this case, the height is outside of the triangle. So in this case, I would have two solutions. And I, and I kid you not, guys, I, I don't have this memorized. I, like, legitimately don't. Okay, so when we do these problems, I don't have these memorized and I'm not going to look them up either. I'm just going to think through them. Okay, so again, um, this is what's on page uh, 402. I just wanted to show you this is what they're doing. They're doing like, and, and, and guys, I'm not joking. I do this on my paper. I do this in the problem. I do this little like, okay, the probe is going, what's going to happen? Okay. So if A is longer than H but shorter than B, it's going to have two solutions, right? And so what does that mean? That means two triangles. And then just as a note here, you need to solve both. So if you get one that has two solutions, you're doing two problems, and you need to do both. And I'll show you how to set that up and how to do that, okay? It's like grow, no oh crap. Like, why can't we just talk about ass and, and not have to do all this work? Well, we can do both. Okay. And then if it's obtuse, you just gotta be careful. So if A is obtuse, uh, A won't be right, because if A was right, then you wouldn't have a triangle. Okay, so if A is obtuse, oh my gosh, my handwriting. Um, so let's draw a picture. So again, what's happening here is A is obtuse. So we're making something obtuse. This is B. My pivot point is still up here. And this is side A. Okay, so as you can see, is this gonna make a triangle? No. If A is less than or equal to B, then there's no solution. Wow. Solution. Okay. And as you can see, like in this case, if I swung this, right, and you can use your imagination, if it's shorter than B, right, then it's not even going to get down to this bottom side. And if it was the same length as B, then this would come down and hit right here, right? So this it would just overlap here. That's not a triangle. So it has to be longer than B. And the longer it is, right, then the different the triangle is going to look. Does that make sense, guys? And again, I'm really encouraging you to use the strobe, this pivot and a strobe light idea because then you don't have to memorize it. You can always just figure it out on your own, right? That and, like, strobe lights are cool, right? Like, math rave. Oot, 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 oot. Ah. I should have done that when I was a robot, then it would have been cooler. All right, uh, all right, and then let's do this last one. And I think you could figure it out, right? If this is B, I have my pivot point, and A is longer than B, 
then you're going to have exactly one solution. Okay. And in this case, you can see this. So uh, now with this, yeah, grooving. So what this means is we have to be precise or more precise in drawing our sketches for law of sign. We can't just wing it. We have to be a little bit precise. We have to be like, if this side is longer, I need to draw it longer. Okay, so you do have to have a little bit more precision in doing these problems. And if you do that, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. We're gonna do some examples now. Okay, so um, let's do it this way. I'm just never gonna give you one with a picture. There, on your homework, there's a couple that give you the picture, but I'm gonna make you guys do it the hard way so that it's easy. So let's, uh, I'm gonna solve the triangle. given that A equals 22 feet, B equals 12 feet, and A equals 42 degrees. Oh, I have such bad news for you guys. Um, you guys are gonna hate me. Uh, our midterm's coming up. So your midterm is gonna be on the 1st of February. Uh, that's not why you should hate me. No, 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 that's not why you should hate me. Uh, why you should hate me is because your midterm is going to be in degrees and radians. <laughs> uh, oof, oof. Don't worry, I'll give you plenty of warning, okay? Like, <clears throat> at the start of the problem, I'll be like, make sure your calculator is in degrees. Make sure your calculator is in radians, okay? But the, the telltale is, right? If it has a degree symbol, it's degrees. If it has no degree symbol, it's radians. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do, and we'll go nice and slow in this one, is we wanna draw a picture. So notice how A is a Q, right? Uh, I like the, cry, the crying emoji, that was really, I like that. I don't do a lot of uh, emojis on keyboards, and or emojis period, and I really like that one. Thank you. Yeah, we do have a midterm. Don't worry, I didn't like forget about you guys. I still hate you. I still want to ruin your lives. I still don't worry about it. Oh gosh, now you guys are coming out with all sorts of crying emojis. Guys, I'm joking. You'll be fine. It's only 10% of your grade. Like holy moly. I'm gonna I'm here. I've got time. I'll have a review assignment. It's easier than you think. Okay, gosh, I gotta do this. Okay, so it's acute. Angle A is acute. B, so this side, because we're doing angle side side, this side is always going to be connected to the angle. And then we have our pivot. Now, if you don't have different colors, just put a big dot there. And then A is 22. So this is where we have to be precise. A is longer than 12. So I'm going to make a point to make it longer than 12. I don't know if I did that. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw in the height. Okay, so let's do this. Let's say first, draw a picture. Okay, so draw a pick if none, and then two, uh, find height. Okay, so we're going to find height. Now remember, when the height comes down, it's going to be perpendicular to the base. That's the definition of, oh my gosh, the cowboy height. Stop, guys. You're making me have too much fun. This is math. We don't have fun. So stop trying to have fun with me because then I'm going to forget to do math. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's do this. So step two, we're going to find the height. So remember, we're doing law of sines. So this is going to be sine of 42 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. I mean, no, 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 that's tangent. Opposite over the hypotenuse. I said the wrong thing, okay? So I have, it was a joke. It was a joke. We, we, of course, we can have fun. I appreciated your cowboy hat. Don't give me the sad ones, then I'll get sad. Okay, so I have opposite over hypotenuse. So this is really easy to solve, right? So I have sine of 42 equals this. I just want 12 off the bottom, so I multiply by 12. I get, oh my gosh, my pen, 12 
sine of 42 degrees equals h. Okay, now we just want an approximation. Oh my gosh. So I got to make sure in my calculator that I'm in degrees, which I am. So I just go 12 sine of 42 degrees. Am I in degrees? I can't see. Yes, I'm in degrees. So it's approximately 8.0296. Okay. So in calculus, you always go to the third decimal point. I would suggest always going to the third decimal point because in AP, they want you to go to the third decimal point. Okay. So now we're going to do some thinking. So this is, right, my height is roughly 8.0296. So that's shorter than this, then shorter than that. So if I put a little beeper on this, right, see how the 22, right, if I go like this, 22 is longer than 12, right? And it's longer than the height. Do you guys see how I can do that? So it's longer than the height and it's longer than the 12. So how many solutions am I going to have? I'm going to have one solution. Right? And that's where it's going to be right here. Um, what do you mean that's the fourth? I don't know. Oh my gosh, you guys did an owl and then you did, I don't know what that one is. Okay, I, uh, I don't know what the question is, that's the fourth. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the fourth. All right, you got me. Uh, usually the third is okay, I did the fourth there. You're right, thank you. Okay, so there's one solution, okay? So I can redraw this picture. You see how this got messy? I can redraw this picture like this. So I have three unknowns. I have two angles and one side to find. You will always have three things to find. So we have to find all three things, okay? So this is where law of sines is gonna be really effective. So we're gonna use law of sines to find everything. So remember, so now use, oh my gosh, this pen's dead. It's dead to me. Use law of sines to find all missing parts. And it's not just law of sines. Use law of sines and like angle sum. Right? Uh, angle sum is just angles in a triangle add up to 180. Okay, so let's go here. So what would I do? So let's say I, I can find, uh, so it doesn't matter. I can find, I'm going to find angle B first. So to do that, I know sine of 42 degrees over 22, so I did sine of A over side A equals sine of B over 12, okay? So notice here I'm looking for angle B because I know this side, okay? I can't solve for anything C yet because I don't know the side or the angle, so this is the only thing I can solve for first. So you can try to solve for other things, it's not gonna work. So how do I solve this? Uh, am I going too fast? Does this make sense how I set this up? I did angle a, sine of angle A over side A equals sine of angle B over side B. So I multiply both sides by 12. Now, this is the part. Do not type this into your calculator until the very end. I'm going to have 12 sine of 42. And you know, I could simplify it, but I'm just going to type it into my calculator anyways, so it's just not worth my brain power. And then I get down to here, I get sine of B. So we have to do the opposite of sine of B. So here I would go sine inverse of both sides. So then I get sine inverse of 12 sine of 42 degrees all over 22 equals B. And this is where you're gonna do your calculator. So I'm gonna have sine inverse 
and then I'm going to have a fraction. And if you don't have one of these calculators, you can use Desmos. Desmos has a, a, a fraction ability. 12 sine of 42 degrees. Make sure you're in degrees over 22. And you can make it look exactly like there. So I have sine inverse of 12 sine 42 over 22. Do you guys see how quick this can be? I hit enter and I get the measure of angle B equals 20, well, I should say approximately, right? Approx, because this is the exact. Do you guys see right here? That's the exact answer, right? That's precise. This is exact. So the measure of angle B is approximately uh, 21.406 degrees. There, I did the third decimal place. Okay, so we did all of that. We still got a couple more pieces left. So now that I have this, right? So I found angle B, so angle B is 21.406 degrees. So to find C, I have to know angle C. Well, to do that, we use the angle sum. What do these add up to? What do the angles in a triangle add up to, right? Angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180. So I don't want to bore you guys with work. I go 180 minus 42 minus, now if I wanted to, I could plug this in. So with my graphing calculator, thank you for saying that, by the way. For my graphing calculator, uh, I would just copy paste. I don't have a copy paste function in this one, but if I did, I would just copy paste. The problem here is you guys see how I rounded? Now this answer could be wrong. So if you do have a graphing calculator or if you are doing this on a, on a, on a computer, I would type this in for my last angle. Uh, in fact, I'm going to because I made a big deal about it. Okay, and then I get uh, the measure of angle C, oh, C is 116.594. Okay, and in this taste case, the rounding worked out for us, so I would have been fine. But I always like to do exact because that's who I am. I like to get the answer right. Now, we're not done. <laughs> So we found angle C, we found angle B, now we have to find side C. So how do we find side C? Well, side C is sine of 116.594. And again, if I had a graphing calculator, I would copy paste all of that and just reuse it. And then I can use, I'm going to use A, so it is 22 feet over sine of 42. Now, you might be like, Kreft, why did you flip it? I flipped it because having C on the top, all I have to do is multiply this fraction by sine of 116.594, and I get my C. And so I'm going to do just that, right? So I'm going to multiply, so sine of 116.594. Five nine four. So what do I get? I get twenty two. Oops. Oops. <laughs> How many times can I say oops before I get it right? Twenty two over sine of forty two times sine of. And then another cool trick you can do if you still have the answer in here, you can go second and then answer. So second answer. Oops. Don't do what I just did, because I did log. But um, second answer, and then that carries the precise definition. So that's another way you can do it without a graphing calculator or a computer. And if I do that, then I get side C is 29.400 feet. And you can see I got right some, some crazy numbers out there. So, it's, um, and I should say approximately, right? Because I'm rounding. I should say approximately to all these. 29.4 feet. Okay. So that is 
And and you can take a screenshot, but also remember this will be on YouTube. Uh, I'm not able to YouTube stream today, so uh, this will um, this will be up. Um, this will be up. Uh, um, what am I trying to say? This will be up later today. Okay. Now, hey, we're running out of time, so if you do want to come back to this, come back to this. But I have to show you a two screen solution. So basically, all it is, guys, is you set it up, you find the height. You see how many solutions you have, and then you solve the triangle using law of sines and angle sum. Okay? I know. Okay. So let's take a look at what happens. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a lot of work. Like, cool. It's just life. Okay. So let's do this one. So this is our last one. So I'm going to have A equals 12 meters. Uh, B equals uh, 31 meters. And then... A equals 20.50 degrees. So I'm going to do this. I have to go a little bit quickly because I only have 10 minutes. So um, I'm going to, again, I have 20.50 degrees. That's my A. My B is 31. And I have a pivot point. And then my A is much shorter than my 31. Okay, so all of this is going to depend on what my height is. Okay, so we have to find height. So to find height, my height is going to be sine of angle A. So sine of 20.50 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to multiply both sides by 31. And then I'm going to type that into a calculator. So I'm going to get 31 sine of 20.5. And I get my height is about 10.856 meters, approximately. I need to get better at writing approximately. OK. So what does that tell me? It tells me that A is longer than my height. So I might have to come back here and go, whoop but shorter than this. So if I go like this, so here I might extend this out like this, then I know it's longer than my height, right? So it's longer than my height, but it's shorter than B. And if it's shorter than B, that means it's gonna come up short, right? So it's shorter than B. Do you guys see how it's shorter than B? So this is 12 here. See how it doesn't go all the way down? So it's gonna go, it's longer than H, but it's shorter than B. So how many different triangles are we going to have? We're going to have two triangles. So we're going to have to solve two different triangles. Now, the only thing that you have to do, it just adds a little bit of work, is first draw the small triangle. So I'm going to have this. Okay, so you'll have to solve this triangle and, sorry, I don't know why I drew it so small. And then, and we have a big triangle. So you have to solve both. So you're going to have two angle C's. You're going to have two angle B's. You're going to have two side C's. So you're going to have, right, you're going to have the measure of angle C equals here, the measure of angle B and um, C. And then here you're going to have the measure of angle C. You're going to have the measure of angle B. And you're going to have C. Okay? So two solution problems suck. Okay? Um, but let's go ahead and go through how to do this, okay? So again, this is just like the last problem. And you're gonna see these are really repetitive. I'm gonna use law of sines to solve here. Now, I don't have anything on C, so I'm gonna solve for B. So I know, uh, let's solve for angle B. So sine of 20.5 over 12 equals 
sine of b over 31. Now, because they're repetitive, this is where you can start doing shortcuts. Like, do I really have to show all my work again? Or do I see that it's 31 times this and then the inverse sine of that? So it's going to be sine inverse of 31 sine of 20.5 over 12 equals b. Right? Do you guys see how I would multiply by 31 first, then take sine inverse? So then I just do this all into my calculator. Guys, when you get good at this, what takes the longest is typing it into your calculator. So I'm going to get sine inverse, but I'm going to go really quick here. 31 sine of 20.5, and then poop my goop. Showing off all my mad calculator skills, and then I make a mistake. So I get the measure of angle B is approximately 64 point seven eight three degrees so that's sixty four point seven eight three degrees so I got one of my answers okay then how do we find angle C well they add up to 180 right so angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees so if I take 180 minus that answer, see how I keep it all in my calculator, and then minus 20.5, I get angle C is about 94.717 degrees. Okay, and then to find C, I'm going to use law of sines again. So I'm going to say C is over um, sine of 94.717, but it's still in my calculator, right? And that equals, uh, let's use A, so 12 over sine of 20.5. So again, I'm just going to multiply by this, right? I'm just going to write answer because that's what I'm going to type into my calculator. So I take 12 over sine of 20.5 and then I just go times sine second answer. So then do you guys see how I'm not rounding? It's getting the exact answer. And then boom, I'm done. So it's not as hard as you think. So this is 34.149. Uh, did I have units on this? I did, meters. Okay, first triangle is done. That's it, I'm done. Okay, so it doesn't take that long when you get really good at it, okay? And then to do the next one, uh, I'm going to just go through this and you guys can come back and watch this later. It's gonna take a while, get, take me a while to upload these videos and I apologize for that. Um, so let's do angle B first. So I'm gonna have sine of 20.5 over 12 equals sine of B over 31. Um, Okay, the problem here is, Merd, I made a mistake, didn't I? Oh my gosh. Do you guys see where I made a mistake? These are my answer. Uh, do you guys see the mistakes? Look at this. Oh, I feel terrible. Oh, I feel terrible. I made a mistake here. Do you guys see how this right here is obtuse? Is this obtuse? No, it's not. It's not obtuse. So, dang it. This is acute. So the 64 point, oh shoot, what did I write down? 64.783 degrees, that goes here. Because you guys see how this is my acute angle B. I'm so upset that I made that mistake. I'm so sorry, guys. Do you guys see how this angle is obtuse? That can't be the angle. That has to be the angle for here. And, and, and a pro tip, your calculator will always find the acute answer. Okay. So, so then how do you find, hey, guys, how do you find then your obtuse answer? Well, it's really easy. 
you just subtract it from 180. So this would be 115.22. Okay. I made a mistake there. I'm so sorry. This did this answer didn't make sense, did it, with this picture? Do you guys see how that didn't make sense? Because this is obtuse. Can you are you guys with me? Like breathe, breathe for a second. Do you guys see how this answer didn't make sense? So this is the acute answer. So um with that said, um this answer would be ninety-four point seven one seven. That looks more like a ninety degree angle. This angle would be, what do we have here? 180 minus 115.22 minus 20.5 equals 44.28 degrees. And then side C is gonna be, this is gonna be side C. And then here it's different angles, so here uh, what's what changes here? Sine. Oh, of C. So this would be instead. This would be forty-four point two eight. So I actually have that in here. Here, like this. So I'm just going to change this to forty-four point two eight. And what do I get? I get this is twenty-three point nine two three meters. So these are my two answers. Okay, so that's how you do that. So remember the calculator will always give acute. Okay, the calculator will always give the acute angle. So that's how I got the acute angle here first. Right? And then to get the obtuse, I just take 180 minus the acute. That's it. Uh, yeah, C is different. Everything is different. Yep, I'm so glad. Sorry, Grace, I just saw your, your answer. All right, guys. Uh,